Hi there, as promised, I thought I'd give you a quick update on what I've been up to in week two of my garage re-roofing project. Now this week, I haven't made anything like the progress I wanted to make because it's been really one of those weeks where you're finding your feet, trying to work out what works and what doesn't work. And I suppose what's really dawned on me is that this isn't really a one-man project, so it is quite challenging. And as the weeks unfolded, I've thought to myself, should I really be doing this on my own, given the sheer size of the challenge? But you know what? You knuckle down, you get on with it, and you realize that if you break it down into small parts, I can actually get it finished, but it'll just take me a lot longer than I would have hoped. Now, I decided to replace one line of the roof felt at a time. Remember, I'm using the Tyvek Supro membrane and no brownie points go to Roofing Superstore who dumped the two rolls that I ordered in the drive badly packaged but hey oh you know one of those things i also took delivery on monday of 672 meters of new tantalized battens i couldn't strip off all the roof in one go because i need to stand on the battens as i'm working on the higher sections as i work up the roof and this gave me a really big problem that i hadn't really anticipated because once you've got a lovely section new section like this in place when I started stripping off the battens from the next line of the old bitumen felt, all of the disintegrated shards of tile that had gathered in between the battens started sliding down the roof. And because I've put this bottom eave batten in place now, there's nowhere for them to go. They just get, all the bits would just get caught behind the batten. I'll come onto this in a little bit more detail in a bit. Now, obviously this wasn't at all ideal. So what I ended up having to do was pin up the old bitumen felt and clean it away each batten as best I could with my leaf blower and then teasing the individual shards down between each layer of the felt by giving it a bit of a tap and then I attached a layer of polythene on top of the new battens and felt that I'd put in so that when I released the folded back layer of bitumen felt all of the shards could harmlessly slide across the new felt I'd laid and onto the floor. I didn't film that because it was a bit of a low point in the week for me because it was really slowing me down uh, but you can understand the issue now stripping battens is a physical job there are lots of ways that you can do this i have two sizes of gorilla bar and it was really helpfully suggested to me that i use my multi-tool to cut the nails off underneath each baton rather than leaving the battens off i did try this but actually i found it was just as quick to use my smaller gorilla bar and a hammer to lever the battens off. What I did use the multi-tool for though was to trim off any of the galvanized nails, the heads of which had snapped off, making them very hard to remove. Interestingly, I bought this new DeWalt Extreme Metal Blade, thinking it would be far superior to the Urbauer multi-tool blades I've already got. And I don't know whether it's just bad luck, but it failed about 30 seconds into the job. A couple of teeth fell off, so I'm speculating as to whether the extreme element of it is extremely useless or you're extremely stupid buying a blade like this. I would say avoid these blades if you can. They're expensive and they aren't any better than the Urbao blades I've been using previously. Now, inevitably this week, I made quite a few mistakes as I was going. The first one was trying to remove one baton at a time across the roof. This is difficult to do as you're treading your way across the roof. Much better to remove four or five battens at once, gradually working across until you've got all of them loose and you can start ripping them off in one go and throwing them into the skip or wherever you've got below. The other mistake I made was actually fixing each baton individually in place. Again, slowing me down as I worked across the roof much better to take four or five battens up on the roof in one go and fix those into position at the same time. I bought this chalk line which I thought would be a really quick way of pinging a line across the roof so that I knew exactly where to fix a batten. It is a fantastic tool this and I would recommend this particular chalk line but the problem you've got is Tyvek recommend you, you leave a slight sag in between the battens. And whilst it has done here, I find it doesn't always leave a chalk line on the undulations between each rafter. So the chalk line is only of limited use to me in this situation. Also, the point I've just made about trying to speed things up by fixing multiple battens in one go isn't going to work if, like me, you're working alone and you've got to ping a chalk line for each batten. So I found the quickest way was to cut little individual blocks to the exact spacing I wanted and so I could quickly put the blocks between each baton, knowing the battens then are in exactly the right position and I don't have to measure the spacing before nailing each baton to the rafters. Now I'm still having a few problems with this Eve support tray. I watched quite a good skill builder video where the roofers were saying that with my plain rosemary style tiles, 
it's very difficult to use Eve support trays because the support tray gets kicked up basically it doesn't work they use sort of I don't know 150 mil wide damp proof course instead but I really like the idea of the Eve support trays lots of you this week have said to me the benefit of them is they don't get kicked up by the wind basically it's just a superior solution for the bottom of the Eve where it goes into the gutter now Sam on my discord chat forum as is so often the case sent me a brilliant visual from Tyvek themselves explaining how you can insert timber tilt fillets to support your eave support tray to stop it kicking up but i have a problem with this with my design of roof and i'll explain a little bit more on this now i mean one of the reasons roofers don't use these eave support trays is because on roofs like mine where we're going to use these clay tiles they give you a bit of a problem because you've got your eave tile here which will sit on a button like that so that's all well and good isn't it you think great okay but look it's a bit there's a bit of flex there so you think i'm going to do something clever here i'm going to insert a timber tilt fillet like that look at that that's lovely that is isn't it it supports the eve support tray really well so you think right well in that case i'll put my baton there but that's not great there's a bit of rock on it you could angle the baton i suppose a little bit but whatever you do, even if you angle the batten, when you put your next tile on top, because obviously the eave tile needs another tile on top to stop any rain getting through, your batten is flying, or rather the tile is way higher than the batten. And that's gonna be a really mad angle for you then to slope back towards the roof. So I've been wondering what to do about it. I thought about cutting this batten down a bit but you can't really because you need to be able to support the tile I thought about having just a one batten to support a full length tile and then you could have the second tile on top of it cutting off the nibs and then are these called nibs I don't know what they're called and then maybe nailing right through the one hole but then this tile is only supported by the nail not by a batten um, that would probably be the neatest solution but it's not ideal because these nails here on the tiles don't completely line up so what I've decided to do reluctantly because I really want to use these um, support trays the reason being that the new breather membrane is quite soft so it's just going to sag into this dip even more than the bitumen felt did and don't forget the bitumen felt sagged into this and we got the bottom um, batten was really rotten so what I'm going to do which is a bit of fun I'm going to get rid of the tilt fillet and I'm just going to slightly bend it in like that that way and this will be nailed down as well so that's all fine that way the eave tar can go on there my secondary batten can go above it and then the top tile can be nailed to that batten like so not a perfect solution but it's about as good as i can do or work out at the moment all you roofers out there tell me what you would do in this situation you probably say ditch the um eve support tray so what i've ended up here with is a bot the bottom batten being firmly clamped down to the eve support tray beneath and i even managed to stupidly crack the support tray here and the issue with this is it negates any benefit that you get from having this sag in between each batten and by sag i'm referring to the fact that for unsupported roofs like mine tyvek recommend you build in a 10 millimeter drape in between each rafter for drainage purposes because any water or moisture that gets under the tiles is going to flow down the roof in these carefully provided for sags that i've put in and then it's going to hit the bottom and it won't be able to travel down into the gutter this is exactly the problem I had with the original battens which you'll remember from last week's video were badly rotten and I just don't know what to do about this if any of you roofers out there watching this vid and have got any smart ideas do let me know in the comment section below because I'd be quite happy actually to strip off this bottom layer and redo it if there's a great solution what I could have done is cut little individual nicks on the back of each of the batten to allow any moisture to come through but the problem with that is it's going to be a little conduit for bugs another pest to get in underneath the tiles maybe they would do anyway actually they're thinking about it 
By the way, I'm sorry if the light is all over the place today. Every time the sun comes out, I have to readjust the camera. A few, po few other points, I treated any woodworm I found as I went, on, went along. I haven't found too much in the rafters so far. I think the roof joists do have quite a lot of woodworm, which I'll have to have a look at once I've finished the job. But the plan is to treat any woodworm I find as I work up the roof. Also, I've got a steel running the length of the garage at the front, and I treated the rust, it's not serious rust, but it has rusted over the years since the 70s when it was put in. I treated that with the brilliant neutral rust that I did a video on in the summer when I was refurbishing my gutters. Can't recommend this stuff highly enough. It's just such lovely stuff to use. And now I've got peace of mind that my steels are rust free and, pr and protected from any moisture. I'm loving the little 18 volt mi trend miter saw they sent me a while back. They haven't paid me by the way to mention it in this video. It's just a super light little tool and quite accurate to use. Great for sort of moving around on site like I'm doing on this job. The majority of the cutting though, I've done actually in situ up the roof because I just found it so much easier to do this than measuring each batten before taking it up there. That point I made earlier about streamlining and in creating efficiencies and speed wherever you can on a job like this. Obviously where you are cutting in situ, you have to be careful not to jag the roof felt, which sounds obvious, but it's very easy to do. Now I had a really frustrating day on Friday. I got off to an absolute flyer, stripping off the next layer of battens. Now I've got a good system for doing this. But what happened, the Pazlaid nail gun that I hired from my local hire store has started to miss fire. Now I was worried this might happen. I said to them in the shop when I hired it, is this nail gun well serviced? Is it likely to miss fire? The reason I say that is because when I was building the fence at the bottom of my garden, I borrowed a Pazlaid nail gun from a mate and that was misfiring all the time. Couldn't be rude about that because it was a great favour of him to lend it to me. But you don't expect this when you're hiring a nail gun commercially. Cut long story short, it completely froze the project yesterday afternoon and I had to down tools. So the first job on Monday will be to take it back. I nearly threw it off the roof at one occasion. I'll see if they've got any other ones they can lend me. But to be quite honest with you, I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet and buy a gas-free 18 volt version, something like this Hikoki. Can't really afford it at the moment with all the other outgoings on this project. But what I also can't afford is the delay that happens from these stupid things misfiring. Andy Mack on Gosford Handyman has done a great video on this. He had exactly the same problem in his case with a brand new Hikoki gas nail gun. And finally, I'm gonna complete the felting job and battening on this side and move on to the south side of the reef. I may or may not do an update video on this next weekend. I might do a video on something else. The point being is I want to show you some really good progress before drip feeding another update. So thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget about my new Patreon channel if you want to access weekly behind the scenes uploads and also access to my Discord chat forum. I'll post a link in the description below the video to that and also to all the other things I've referred to today, which you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. Don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. Thanks for watching and see you soon.